listening to your home. Yes. And, uh, thank you for being here. And uh, if it's okay, we can stand up and pray. Um, Jerusalem, you walk, Jerusalem is this way. Let's go open up the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Lord, Heavenly Father, create of heaven and earth, God of all spirits, we come to you in fellowship. We honor your name today. We ask that you open our understanding, O oh Lord, pour out your spirit upon us so that we may know your will. And Give us the guidance that we need to do your will in all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, and just, <laughs> just starting off, um, good brother Albert, he, he wanted the sister to have a scarf. And I just wanted to read to you why he said that. Oh, I understand. Oh, you do? Okay. Okay. Does everybody understand why he said that? Say it again. Why he, he said uh, that she may need a scarf. We need one? No, I'm saying, did you, uh, through this, from the scriptures or from the Bible, do you understand oh, okay. what he's saying? Okay, so in uh, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, it says, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonor of her head. But that is even all one as if she were shaped. So that's why he asked the sister to cover her head. Um, if I could just ask, just get a get a uh, idea of where everybody's coming from spiritually. Um, if I can maybe ask you about your background a little bit, if that's okay. Like where you grew up, as far as what kind of church you went to growing up, mm -hmm. or what church you still go to. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll start off with myself. I grew up in a <laughs> in a Baptist church, and uh, my grandparents on both sides started Baptist churches in their uh, where they lived at two different cities. Mm -hmm. Start with you, sir. Okay. Uh, I know the first church I was baptized in was the Seventh Day Adventist. Okay. And uh, when I was raised, when I kid raised up, I was with what was that? I guess it was Apostolic Church. Apostolic. Apostolic to Seventh Day Adventist, Seventh Day Adventist to uh, United Methodist. Okay. So I was and like, Baptist. And Baptist. A lot more. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Me. Well, like you said, my grandparents on my mother's side established Mount Carmel Holy Church of America. Okay. And I was saved there at 12 years old. And that's all I know. That's all you know. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Live holy. Follow the Bible. That's it. <laughs> I was raised up Baptist. I went to Union Grove and was baptized in Union Grove. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, well, we lived in Delaware. And we went to a Baptist church. I couldn't remember what it was. It's been so long. Yeah. But uh, I got baptized in Delaware. I don't remember the church either now. That's so far back. Yeah. But I'm Baptist. Okay. I've always went to Baptist church. Gotcha. Understood. Like most of our people. Yeah. <laughs> Not of our people. I grew up Jehovah Witness. Jehovah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I grew up Baptist. Uh, up. My family. Uh, Started a church here in Mount Zion. Out um, in Ohio, in this area? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's come on. Okay. Um, years, years ago. Um, so my family uh, raised me in there. Um, till I was about seven or eight when my dad passed. My dad was a deacon at the church. Um, but uh, from then, just kind of journeyed through, kind of hopping in and out, but always Baptist. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think I was raised holiness. When that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we had some services, man. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't remember learning all that. <laughs> no, we didn't learn a lot. <laughs> but it didn't feel me when I got older. I had a whole lot of questions when I got older. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, went to your, uh, United Holiness probably for the most part. Okay. Christianity, but I'm not dealing. With I know. Five years. I'm not that no more. Okay. So you've been dealing with the word about five years. Yeah, it'd be about five or six. Yeah. About five or six. Four, yeah, that's right. And it's messianic. Or Messianic or I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I no Messianics. Oh, so you don't oh, oh no Messianic. No, yeah, no Messianic. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. A, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, Yahweh, uh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. So okay, yeah, that's my the name of Yahweh Shai. Gotcha. Absolutely. Understood. Understood. Okay. Um, 
the reason I was asking because, you know, we have all these denominations, but the Bible is saying it's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And uh, oftentimes we grew up in these churches, go to church our whole lives. We don't have an understanding of what the Bible is actually saying, and we don't understand the plan of God. So I just want to touch upon that today and talk about the kingdom of God that's going to be established here on earth. So if you have the scriptures, if you have a Bible in front of you, if you have a phone, you can probably access one really quickly. <laughs> We could turn in the gospel according to Mark chapter 1. What was it? Mark. The gospel according to Mark chapter 1. Because I grew up, like many of you in the Baptist church, thinking I was going to heaven. I thought that my whole life. Until it was shown to me that that's not in the Bible. Um... And we'll see here when the Messiah, or the Messiah, when he came, he came preaching the gospel, but it wasn't a gospel, good news about taking anybody to heaven. Rather, it was a gospel saying that there will be a kingdom here on this earth. So if we start uh, Mark 1, chapter 1 and verse 14, it reads as follows. Now after that, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So again, he didn't come saying he was going to take us anywhere. Rather, that there will be a kingdom here on this earth. Everybody can see that. One thing we want to do, was that I, I, I love to do, is read it out of the Bible. Because when we grew up in these churches, they gave us a lot of opinion, a lot of traditions of men. And the Bible tells us in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth is, he wasn't born on December 25th, nor did he die good Friday and rise Easter Sunday. Nor is weekly Sunday worship established in the scriptures or in the New Testament. So we need to worship him according to what's written if we're going to do it at all. So here in uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, this should sound familiar, what I'm about to read. Many of us know this by heart, but don't realize what it's actually saying. This is Matthew, the sixth chapter, in verse nine, when his disciples, Matthew six, in verse nine, when his disciples asked him in another place, they say, Lord, teach us how to pray, as John taught his disciples. He told them, after this matter, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, so he said, honor the Father. I'm in Matthew, the sixth oh, chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, the sixth chapter, the first book in the New Testament, right after the book of Malachi. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Everybody with me? Oh. Uh, verse 9. Matthew 6, is correct, and verse 9. So it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So you give honor and reverence to the Father. Then he says, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, a kingdom is coming where? To this earth. That's the plan that he has in store for this earth. So all that you see on this earth, the powers that be right here, and one day every knee is going to bow, every tongue shall confess, it's going to be put down. The kingdoms of this world are, become, are going to become the kingdoms of our Lord of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Let's go to uh, now how the New Testament goes in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I just want to dispel something real quick. Again, like I said, I grew up thinking I was going to heaven. That's what I thought. No matter all the bad things I did, <laughs> all the dirt, <laughs> I thought I was going to heaven. Well, who would Adam and Eve did their wild part if they did? Then no one was supposed to believe that. Say that again for me, sister. Adam and Eve, when they God took them out of the kingdom of heaven, I mean, out of the garden. Mm -hmm. How could you think that if it's evil, it was definitely there then? 
Yeah, but but how I grew up though, what I was being taught was something different. Okay. So what I was being taught was really all I was being taught was is that all you got to do is believe and that's it. You don't have to keep a law, you don't have to be in, uh, obedient to his Torah, to his instructions. All you have to do is just believe. So that's what I was taught. Um, let's go to John. <laughs> what do they teach? They meant you did it right. And what you follow that Bible 100%. And what does that mean? It means you obey. As you learn and grow, you obey what you find in the Word. And they did did believe heaven would come down the Word. And, and did they teach, they taught uh, that you had to keep the commandments of God. Yes. And what, they failed on the Sabbath. They failed on the Sabbath. <laughs> for sure. Is that where you were going? Not just the Sabbath. Oh, but they believed in all the rest of them. So they kept the other feast days. Mm -hmm. They kept they kept uh, Passover and Pentecost. And well, not necessarily the Jewish feast, no. But then, yeah. No, yeah. So, I'm, but I'm saying they, they, it's a growing thing. Mm -hmm. so, and what about your diet? Oh well, they they weren't too hot on that either. Right. That's all in that's all in this, in the law though. <laughs> I know, but they weren't too hot on yeah, that. Yeah, they. I mean, they did, you know they weren't we weren't perfect. They weren't perfect. But they were trying to live right. Trying. According to traditions. To their understanding and traditions. And, yeah. But they're growing. The yeah. church is growing. It's changing. See, he didn't give us traditions of man, though. No, he didn't. No. Yeah. Uh, John, the third chapter. John, the third. And verse 13. John, the third chapter, and verse 13. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And four Gospels, that's the last of the four. And John 3 and 13, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Christ, he tells us, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So nobody has ever gone to heaven. Then he tells you other places in John, Whether I go, ye cannot come. So he was going to heaven. He went but everybody else that has died or that has lived, they're on this earth. And they'll be there to the time of the resurrection. Again, I was taught something differently. I was taught that people, that those who were righteous or how, how they taught was right, what righteousness was, were in heaven. But at the same time, we went out to the graveyard and put them in the ground. Mm -hmm. But then they told us that their soul mm -hmm. went out to heaven. But you can't read that they, you have a soul inside of you. Again, that's what I was taught, but that's not death. That's not Bible at all. You are the soul, and when you die, you're a dead soul. Mm. That's why in Genesis it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. And when you die, you are a dead soul until the time of and Regardless of how you live, you're still going to rise up. You either, ultimately, when it's all said and done, because you have a first resurrection when he comes back, you have a thousand year millennial reign of, 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 of Jesus. Then you have a second resurrection where all those who have died that didn't come up in the first resurrection and all those who are alive at that time because you still going to have flesh and blood during that thousand years. Then they're going to be resurrected. You're going to need to be resurrected. You had a resurrection of life where you literally become what you were intended to be, which is God. He was reproducing himself when he made us. That's why it says, ye are God's children of the most high God. And, or you will be cast into the lake of fire where the worm dies not the fire is not quenched for eternity. It's either one or the other. There's no purgatory. I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm just saying, you know, that's a, that's a doctrine of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And the idea of a soul floating off somewhere, we actually get that in Christianity through Greek philosophy. Uh, people like Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas, these Catholic fathers, were adherents to philosophy, okay. Greek philosophy, and they...